Some 11 years after Diablo 3, Blizzard is back with another barnstorming hack and slash adventure. Diablo 4 is a return to the dark, realistic stylings of the first two series entries, coupled with modern rendering tech and a focus on current gen consoles and PC. At a glance, it's definitely a pleasing effort, especially when you consider the colossal visual leap from the prior games. At the same time, Diablo 3 aimed for smooth console performance, with 60 FPS visuals throughout, which seems like it could be a challenge with the new visual target. So is Diablo 4 up to the same framerate standards, and do the new visuals take special advantage of the latest console hardware? The most impressive aspect of Diablo 4's visual presentation is its lighting. Essentially, most lights within the game world are shadow casting, and the player gets a sort of soft frontward facing light to illuminate the area around them that also casts shadows. The subtle play of the shadow maps as you move through each interior space is very cool, very attractive, and very atmospheric. Light just dances through dark spaces in a really pleasing way, with softly diffused shadows moving in concert with the player character. There are some interesting tricks going on here as well. Certain light sources showcase a kind of variable penumbra effect at times, with shadow detail blurring out at range. And in some circumstances, the lighting can cast multiple shadows at once off the same object. Diablo 4 isn't pushing any boundary expanding tech here as far as I can tell, but a lot of attention has clearly gone into lighting the game, especially in Diablo's softly lit dark dungeon interiors. Diablo 4 also features quite impressive environmental detail and asset work. Each space is caked with geometry, with a ton of little crannies and crags across every worn surface. The game is always presenting a top-down view nearly parallel to the ground, so you don't really get the opportunity to inspect anything from close range, but from the gameplay view, all the details in the world hold up very well. Materials appear to get a very solid PBR treatment, which lends the environment some muted but accurate look with soft, diffuse snow and dirt, shiny worn floors, and speckled wet stone. The overall look of the game reminds me quite a bit of 2021's Diablo 2 Resurrected, albeit this time with nicely modeled fully 3D environments and accurate lighting. Occasionally, the game will segue into some proper in-engine cutscenes, which are presented with Blizzard's typical cinematic flair. These sequences do look pretty impressive and represent a big leap over other Diablo titles, which simply didn't have the graphical fortitude to pull off real-time close-ups like these, instead relying largely on pre-rendered cinematics to tell their story. You do still get a high-end CG intro in Diablo 4, but the other story segments are real-time sequences, which manage to hold their own despite the close camera angles. But the core of the Diablo 4 experience lies in its fast action combat. Like in Diablo 3, enemy groups tend to be large and come at you fast, necessitating screen filling crowd control and AOE abilities. When the screen is packed full of enemies and spell effects, the game looks excellent, but it still manages to remain legible for gameplay purposes. On a micro level, there's lots of cool touches as well. My sorcerer's ice spells have excellent looking shaders, and frozen enemies get blasted into icy bits when hit with powerful abilities. Physics are a big part of the combat. Enemies convincingly ragdoll when killed or when cleaved into pieces. Bits of the environment can get blown apart when hit with an errant spell or a melee strike. The results aren't as highly exaggerated as they are in Diablo 3, but it all feels appropriate given the more realistic tone. There's a lot of environmental animation too, like the pulsing mass here, alongside foliage that bends with the wind and a variety of weather effects. On the whole, Diablo 4 just feels very organic. The world has a certain lived-in quality thanks to the asset work, and feels very interactive because of the lighting, physics, and nice little touches like geometric snow deformation. It's an impressively realized effort and a very polished game from a visual perspective. At the same time, we're not necessarily seeing very much in the way of current gen pushing tech. There's no ray tracing at hand, Shadows definitely take the form of shadow maps, for instance, and reflections are taken care of with SSR. And there are certain visual choices that stem from the game's isometric camera that won't suit all players. For instance, there's no true day-night cycle. Instead, the game switches between day and night every so often when you teleport from place to place, enter a location, 
or progress in certain missions. The game's shadow position seems carefully set for artistic and gameplay legibility reasons, but I'm sure this will annoy some players. And there's no camera control whatsoever without the option to zoom out or change the camera angle at all. The game's camera position is a touch too close to the action for monitors in my opinion, and players have no ability to change that. A lot of Diablo 4 players will be coming off years of playing Diablo 3, so I thought I would take a moment to compare the two titles and to highlight the monumental visual improvement Blizzard has made for their latest title. Diablo 3 wasn't a bad looking game, but it was pretty out of date from a technical perspective even at launch, and it looks laughable in some respects in 2023. I'm looking at both games running on PS5 here. Character models, for instance, are very basic. Even the player character gets a bare minimum of detail with simple textures and crude geometry. Diablo 4 characters are far more complex, packing tons of polygons with carefully modeled equipment and with a convincing material response. Diablo 4 also has properly customizable characters, which is a first for the series, with plenty of options at hand. The game world is much more complex in Diablo 4, Gone are the cartoony textures that stretched over flat geometry in Diablo 3, replaced with detailed ground surfaces with normal maps and plenty of real geometry and properly animated foliage. Each environment has so much more detail and much closer fidelity to real world materials. Lighting in Diablo 3 was also pretty basic. Most of the lighting data was baked with a subtle real-time light that followed the player. The game did feature shadow maps, but they didn't correspond to any particular light source in the environment. Diablo 4 has much higher fidelity real-time lighting with beautiful shadows, and spell effects also project light onto the environment. Now Diablo 3 obviously had to work with a more limited set of hardware than the newest Diablo entry. The game ran pretty comfortably even on computers that were considered pretty mediocre in 2012, and targeted a full 60 frames per second on PS3 and Xbox 360. Diablo 3 still has its visual merits. The cartoony art style, which was quite controversial at the time of release, has held up pretty well relative to some of its contemporaries, and the game fares well even on older power-limited hardware. But the visual improvement is absolutely enormous moving to the new game. So Diablo 4 is a sophisticated and visually polished adventure, but how do the current gen consoles stack up? Resolution-wise, Diablo 4 pairs relatively low internal resolutions with a form of upsampling, which based on the artifact patterns appears to be AMD's FSR2 to produce a sharp and detailed final image. On PS5 and Series X, the internal resolution appears to be roughly 1260p, with the possibility of dynamic resolution, though I didn't spot evidence of it in my testing. The game is reconstructed to 4K though, so for all practical purposes, we're getting a very clean final resolve. There's so much consistency from frame to frame because of the isometric game camera that spotting any reconstruction issues is a challenge. I did occasionally spot some ghosting artifacts on foliage while playing, but that's pretty much it. Series S acquits itself pretty similarly with a smooth, nicely resolved image free of artifacting. Here, the internal resolution is about 864p, with upsampling reconstructing that image to something in the vicinity of 1440p. It does look somewhat softer than the premium machines, but it holds up just fine on a 4K TV from a typical viewing distance. Outside of the differences in image resolve, there's not a whole lot that separates the current gen machines. PS5 and Series X basically seem like a match in terms of visual settings, though randomized environment elements sometimes look different across the two consoles. Series S gets a few nips and tucks, with lower res shadow maps, less convincing ambient occlusion, and simplified ground details in certain spots. The Series S does have a lower install size than the other two consoles, and it's likely that some of the assets have been pruned a bit, but from the gameplay camera angle, any significant changes were hard to spot. Really, the game looks great on all current-gen consoles, and the Series S version is less compromised than usual. Diablo 4 targets 60 FPS on 9th-gen consoles, and it hits that target the vast majority of the time. Series S and X can drop a frame or two very occasionally during open-world traversal, 
but do stick to 60 otherwise. PS5 seems to lose frames a bit more often with regular one-off dropped frames in the game's large central city area. It's not a big deal in any event though. Large combat encounters don't seem to cause issues on any of the three platforms, though it's possible that complex endgame content could provoke issues that we're not seeing here. I did notice, however, that a handful of specific enemy animations update sort of irregularly, though I suspect this is probably a glitch and not intended behavior. Plus, the game's real-time cutscenes do run at 30 frames per second. Though given that these are not interactive sequences, I didn't really mind. Diablo 4 has been a very consistent experience for me with respect to the game's online connectivity. The game isn't playable offline, just like the PC version of Diablo 3, but it has launched in a much better state than that title. There was one brief window where I had trouble logging in, but I think it's been a pretty smooth launch all things considered. Current gen consoles are mostly in good shape, so how does the game fare on last gen machines? I don't have time to run through every console here, so I've picked the PS4 as my point of reference. The biggest cutback by far is the move towards a 30 FPS frame rate target. Diablo 4 aims for a mere 30 FPS on last gen hardware, and the game is punctuated with frame rate drops and stutters on top of that, which can be quite severe at times. In my testing, both of these issues seem to be common to all last gen machines. There are also a handful of visual changes that are worth noting. Environmental geometry is simplified and looks a lot chunkier on PS4, textures have a lower quality level, and shadow resolution takes another hit, with less distinct outlines than Series S. Internally, the PS4 is rendering the image at 720p, though the final resolved image appears to be upsampled to 1080p. So Diablo 4 on last-gen consoles is a serious downgrade from current-gen hardware, which mostly comes down to that 30fps frame rate target. It just doesn't feel smooth at all coming from current-gen machines, especially given the constant scrolling movement of the camera and the complete lack of any motion blur. It's playable enough, I suppose, but it's not ideal, and Diablo 3's 60fps update provides a much more fluid experience on the same hardware. Diablo 4 is a game that surprised me quite a bit. Blizzard's recent titles have embraced lower detail, stylized art, which helps them stay fresh even into relatively old age. But Diablo 4 embraces the realistic look of the first two series entries and manages a less stylized look effectively. This is a visually polished, sophisticated looking game that looks very modern and is packed with detailed assets. It doesn't seem to be packing any boundary pushing rendering tech, but it consistently looks excellent. It plays very well too, thanks to a careful evolution of the gameplay systems from Diablo 3 and a larger, more open-ended world. The hack and slash combat has been slowed down a bit, with a greater emphasis on dodging enemy attacks and managing crowds. Players are given more freedom to customize a character from the start of the adventure, with a highly flexible though somewhat complex skill system. I found it a lot more engaging than Diablo 3, at least during the pre-endgame leveling process. The only real caveat is that the game is, understandably, heavier than the Blizzard titles that preceded it. Even though Diablo 4 isn't especially heavy by the standards of most recent releases, it's not a great experience on last gen hardware. On the plus side, the current gen versions are in excellent condition, and the game feels remarkably polished even at launch. Diablo 4 is a very impressive effort, and a welcome change of pace from the glut of technically compromised releases we've seen in recent months. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and press the bell for YouTube notifications. Check out the Patreon at digitalfoundry.net for exclusive and early access content. And to get in touch, just use Twitter. Thanks for watching.